Today we will demonstrate how to use an Android device with the EOS brand of Aero GPS and GNSS receivers. This will work with the Aero Lite, the Aero 100, the Aero 200, and the new Aero Gold. So first what you will need to do with your Android phone or tablet is you will need to download the EOS Tools Pro app. It's free, it's an easy download. And to initially take a look at it, you can see here we have the main screen, which will feed the satellite data from the receiver via Bluetooth straight into our EOS Tools Pro app here. You can see there's no information currently streaming. There's a two-step process with Android devices. So initially what we need to do is to go to our Android devices settings page, choose your Bluetooth, and then here under available devices, you would normally see your arrow receiver right here. So you just want to click it the first time. You can see we've already done this in the past, so it's already currently in our paired devices. So once that's done, we'll now go to the next step for getting it to work correctly with the EOS Tools Pro app. We are going to switch back here. Now what we need to do is come up in the upper right corner here to the More tab. And initially, the first step, the first time you do this, will be to enable the mock location. So we're just going to check that. And then next, we need to select our GPS device. You can see we have a couple devices here. We are actually going to demo the Arrow Gold. So we'll select that. And then we need to actually start the GPS. And it'll take it a second here to start feeding the information straight from our receiver. There's a nice function right there, told us it connected to the Aero Gold and not the Aero 200 because we want to demo the Aero Gold today. So our main information here is our latitude and longitude. You can see it's being live streamed right into our Android device. And this is the ellipsoid height. This is the height above ellipsoid. So just make a note that is not mean sea level, that is height above ellipsoid. The other information we can see here is in the total sky view of satellites, there's 25 currently above us right now at our location. And the receiver is utilizing information from 21 of these satellites. Here you can see the diff status is DGPS, which means we're using the free SBAS corrections. This is the common workflow for the Aero Light submeter receiver and the Aero 100 submeter receiver. And you can see what's the most important to us here is being able to see what our estimated accuracy is. This is horizontal estimated accuracy, so under 40 centimeters currently, and our vertical estimated accuracy under 70 centimeters. Now, there's some other options down here. We're currently in status, and we can come up here and look at the satellites. So we can see the sky plot of the satellites above us. And we can see these are the GPS satellites currently being tracked and the GLONASS satellites being tracked. And the Chinese Beidou constellation, you can see it's too far out here at the periphery, so we're not actually using the information streaming from that. It would decrease our accuracy. But if we had a Chinese Beidou one a little more above us, it would show up here. So we can see we're using nine GPS satellites and seven GLONASS currently, and then out of the three SBAS or WASP constellation satellites above us feeding us submeter corrections, we are grabbing two of them currently, so that's great. And this RX light blinking here is telling us that we're getting uh, information coming from the receiver. There's also the map view. So you can see we're currently in Oregon right now where we're filming this. And here is our EOS receiver information here. And there's not a, <clears throat> a lot we can do with this particular map. We can't record data. We can just view where we are. So let's go back to position. And then down here, we have a number of other pages. One interesting page here is our terminal. And this is just showing us that we're receiving our raw satellite data. And so if it's moving up, good we're getting information from our receiver and then if we are utilizing uh, HTML web, web application to maybe you have your own uh, personal 
or company application that you've built in HTML that is a GIS application. You can actually put in the uh, address for your application here and then go to that and from within this page here you can use the receiver's information, its latitude and longitude to record data inside your own personal app. Then we also have a set of alarms here and this is actually very cool because one thing we can do is we can turn on this lost connection. This is related to our Bluetooth connection. So if for some reason the Bluetooth connection between our Android device and our error receiver is lost, it will beep at us and tell us, hey, if something's happened, you've lost your connection, stop working and reestablish your connection. The other thing we have here is the different alarms here we can set based on the type of work we're doing. Now this can get very complicated for your standard users, it's a little in depth, however, we have these handy dandy uh, preset defaults. So a common workflow for the Arrow Light and the Arrow 100 units would be to select submeter. And now what this will do is while we're conducting work, if our receiver goes above one meter in accuracy, estimated at horizontal accuracy, it'll beep at us and let us know. Another thing we can look at here is the uh, differential age. So for one unique feature of the arrow light in the arrow 100, the coast feature, it will save our correction data coming in from the SBAS or WAS satellites and it will keep applying that so that we can have better accuracy under canopy work in case we've lost our direct connection to the SBAS or WAS satellites. It'll tell us that at this point, when it starts beeping at us, we need to go back out into the open, require our SBAS satellites, and get a more current version of corrections from the SBAS satellites to bring our accuracy down as good as we can get. And then we can go back under the canopy and continue our work and continue utilizing the coast feature on these receivers. Another very nice default here is the RTK default. So you can see if it's not RTK fixed, it'll beep at us. If our horizontal accuracy goes above three centimeters or if our differential age gets too high. And we can actually go in there and change that to maybe a lower setting if that's what we prefer. Now, we're going to come back here and you can see, like we mentioned earlier, we're currently just using SBAS or WAS corrections, the DGPS. So you can see our accuracy right here. However, if we are using RTK, we can come in here and we can put our in-trip credentials for our local RTK network so that we can get our accuracy down to a much tighter horizontal accuracy. However, we're going to save that for a different video, our main page here. And thank you for your time, and please contact us if you have questions about any of our receivers. They range from submeter receivers like the Arrow Light and the Arrow 100, all the way down to the centimeter accuracy receivers, uh, the Arrow 200 and the brand new Arrow Gold. Thank you.